for us it was like there were no other choice, no other way. You know, when you travel, when you study, you see that world is plenty of opportunities and uh, on the same time you have a half mafia state in your own home. You cannot not stay, you cannot sit at home and wait that someone will come and fix you. That's, it was our job to do that. And uh, it wasn't like, a, you know, uh, something challenging and terrifying to go to the streets. It was something very natural, very normal. Like, for me the question would be, why didn't you go? Then, why did you? And I'd love to find out how you got involved in that conflict in your country in the first place. In 2014, I was a PhD student at the, our Kiev National University. I was studying literature, I was teaching the history of Ukrainian literature for my students, but in the end of the autumn, um, the, the protests started on the streets. And uh, these protests, they were um, actually arranged by young Ukrainians who didn't want to uh, to be a part of uh, um, this corrupt governmental um, approach to how Ukrainian, uh, how Ukraine should develop. Well, at that time, we have we had a president who was ex-criminal. Uh, he rejected to sign an association agreement with the European Union, and uh, people uh, stood up, and then they were gladly beaten, and the revolution started. Do you have a perspective on what are the more fundamental human rights or the more basic rights that should be protected or freedoms that people should have? Mm, you know, I, I would like to um, divide the human rights on mm. the important and non-important. We are humans and freedom is in, in different uh, scales, in, in different uh, directions, levels, is the most important thing we have. That's the difference uh, that makes us human, that we can choose who are we, who we want to be, and what we want to do. And that's, that's the most amazing thing in life. Freedom and responsibility. And it makes us independent and it makes us humans. That gave me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> So what do you think is something that a lot of people don't appreciate or, or don't know about human rights? Uh, misconceptions, perhaps. The main misconception is that people think that someone else should defend this especially right. Like some, there is someone who will come and fix this issue instead of you or your community, especially like in your community. That's, that's the biggest misconception I've seen in my country. That people think, oh, we need a leader, or we need uh, someone, or we need, uh, I don't know, uh, a group, or, or an oligarch, or someone else. No, you don't need anyone. There is only one person <laughs> who can do that. That's you, and then, then, then people around you who you will encourage to, do and to, to go and do the job. So we're talking about responsibility. Yes. That's, as soon as you start to speak about rights, <laughs> you have to remember about responsibility. It goes very tight together. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people, everywhere we look on the media, they talk about freedom and human rights, but I don't oftentimes hear people talk about the responsibility that comes with that. And so I'm kind of curious what that was like for you to go back to your country after that and work in the government to try to reform it. Can you tell me what that experience was like? You know, it was a nightmare <laughs> because uh, um, I came from the humanitarian background. I, I did some international work as being a civil activist. I went to uh, United Nations General Assembly, to OSC, to all the big events and worked uh, on, on the highest level with, um, on international relations. But then I came home and I was uh, um, invited to be a deputy governor of the biggest region in Ukraine. Uh, on the south with the uh, seaports and um, I started to work there. We, we changed the public services and it was 
kind of interesting job because it was uh, quite wide, uh, different people. You figure out how institutions work, how, how to fix it, to make it more transparent. But then I was appointed by the president to be the chief of the customs of the South region. And it is really huge. I was responsible for 1,400 people, five seaports, like more than 35 checkpoints. And that was a huge challenge for me. And that was the moment when I was deciding if I really can take such responsibility to do that. But when you, remember, when you at the same time remember those people who were dying during the protest and they were ready to give their life, and then you think, yes, I should. I should try to do my best because someone invested so much for us young people to try to do the, uh, our country a better place. And I spent more than a year being a chief of the um, customs and we cleaned it from the corruption. Um, and about one month ago, I um, resigned uh, because of the, um, I wouldn't say it's conflict, but um, different goals with the Ukrainian government <laughs> because the, they were trying to defend the old elites. You know, old elites are coming, they're trying to defend fi financial uh, flows and so on. And this few years that I was working for the government was really the most challenging in my life. A very important lesson is that reshaping your state is harder than to protest. Do the small steps. I think that if you want to fight for any issue, it's very important to act. And that's the first part. And the second is it's very important to have people who you trust and who you work together about this issue. Because uh, we are small alone and we are huge together. Just find someone who is uh, Mm, worried about the same things uh, and and act.